Hello everybody and welcome to this week's Everton show. Well it's fair to suggest that the 2017-18 campaign hasn't really, as yet, been one to remember. But us Evertonians do like to celebrate the good times and it has been a particularly good week for Everton Football Club. A great win against Leicester City, a good performance as well. Two excellent goals from Theo Walcott. We've also signed a player on loan from Manchester City. And of course the return of Seamus Coleman. To pick the bones out of all that loss, I've got Snods and Sharpie alongside me. We did the commentary snods. It was a mm. bit nervy at times, but what a massive win. Yeah, we needed it. Uh, so important. We've got a tough game at uh, Arsenal at the weekend, but uh, we needed three points, and thankfully we got it. I didn't think we started off greatly. First 20 minutes, I thought uh, Leicester played reasonably well, took the game to us, but then when we scored the goal, I thought that's when we, we started to play. We started to play with good energy. Players got about the pitch. There were some great performances, individual performances, and collectively as a team. And uh, I thought thoroughly deserved the victory. We were under pressure the last 20 minutes. We were biting as nails, does we really was uh, waiting for the whistle to go. But overall, a much needed three points because mm -hmm. Leicester didn't sit back as well. Mm -hmm. They're a dangerous team. So uh, yeah, you look at Swansea winning, mm. beating Arsenal, you look at Bournemouth beating Chelsea mm. as well, so it was so vital that we got the three points. Yeah, uh, I, I thought I thought we negated the threat, you know, we talked before the game about the threat being Vardy, mm. you know, and OK, he scores a penalty, but uh, apart from that, I don't think he got a kick. No. You know, so the threat that they had, I think we negated that, and, and all credit to, to the team for doing that, so I thought it, it was well worked, I think we planned it out, I thought there was a lot of top performances throughout, in, in every area. Uh, and yeah, they had they hit the woodwork, and they'll say they were unlucky. But I just thought we we kept them at bay, and, and really good performances all round. Well, more good news on the night was the recruitment of Eloquine Mangala from Manchester City. The big Frenchman came to Finch Farm probably round about the same time that Theo Walcott was found in the back of the net. And one of the first things he did when he got here was sit down and speak to the Everton show. I know the league. I know I know well the league. <coughs> I've been as well to another league yeah. in Spain, Valencia la last season. So I've um, I know so many things about about football. I I've, I've changed because for me that is a change when you can uh, touch different different league. That is something good for for your experience and definitely uh, now I'm. Um, better player than when I arrived in Manchester City three years ago. Again, a lot of pressure when you're at Manchester City. They're expected to compete for big titles and you got to a Champions League semi-final as well. Again, another good memory beating Paris Saint-Germain with the likes of Ibrahimovic, Cavani up front. So more good experiences that help you grow as a player. Yeah, of course, because it's not everybody can play like a semi-final Champions League. For example, if I, I can, um, can explain something, David Silva was his first semi-final Champions League and we speak about David Silva. Yeah. David Silva won World Cup, won European Cup, played for the Spanish team and it was his, his first time to play the semi-final Champions League. So, a wife there is something very special. It's not everybody can achieve to arrive, to arrive there. So yeah, for that is a very good memories. And it was a tough game because before we played against against PSG, it was like um, two very good two very good game, and um, I played very, very well in this both game, and then we we played against Real Madrid, we drew at home, and then we lost one 0 away against um, a very 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 good team, 
with more experience in in this uh, in this competition that's make the difference but uh, of course to play this kind of, of game give you um, something more yeah like a player and you analyze your own game a lot don't you read that you look back and watch every game you played in and use that as a way to try to improve what you could have done better in certain situations is that still a big part of what you do yeah I think until the end of my career we can every day we can improve and uh, do so many things you can we can work because uh, um, we can't be okay you now I'm for example I'm 26 okay I already play for this kind of thing I already play this kind of game so I can just come on the pitch and just rest now I'm not like that that's not my mentality every day training after every game I want to see um, what I did wrong what I get what I can improve what I did well because so, uh, as well it's good to 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 realize what you did well and try to reinforce that yeah. and for the for the next game. So for me, until the end of my career, until the last day, I'm going to try to improve uh, what I can improve. You say you could potentially play your first game against Arsenal and you alluded to it earlier, you have good memories of playing Arsenal, don't you? you scored against them in the Champions League all those years ago. Yeah, that's uh, what I say because like I was 18, my first Champions League game was against Arsenal and I scored after, after two minutes. So, uh, yeah, Arsenal is a, is a good memory for me. And just lastly, on the rest of this season, what do you think you can achieve here in the, from these last few months of the campaign with Everton? Yeah, I hope, you go, I hope you're going to um, win most part of the game and finish um, as high as possible. That is the, um, it's very important to, to show to everybody we have a very good squad, you have a very good team and we can do something, something very good for in this league. Looks a big unit, doesn't he, Snods? Which is what we like for our centre-halves. He's a very big lad, yeah. Hopefully, defensively, uh, he'll win things in our box. And then, when we get set players as well, free kicks, corners, does he'll, he'll be a threat in uh, the opposition box. Mm. So, something we haven't really got height in there and presence and power. Funes Mori used to uh, enjoy going up for set plays and, and get himself on, on the end of things. So, uh, hopefully, if selected, then he'll do that. He's got a pedigree, hasn't he? Manchester City. French international. Yeah, he has, and you know, I'd say he's an old-fashioned centre half, and I think maybe under Guardiola at Man City, people expected him to come out and play out and look silky on the ball. And I don't think he's that sort of player. I think he's a an out-and-out -out defender who likes to defend. Uh, and, and the snods mentioned Funes Mori there as well. He, he can go forward and score goals as well, you know. And I just think that we've got to give him time. It's another one we've got to give him time. But listen, his pedigree's there. You know, mm. he's playing international football for France. Uh, and he's played for Man City as well. He had a bad injury last year, uh, but he's came back from that now, so hopefully we see the best of him. Mangala, Theo Walcott, Jeng Tosun as well. It hasn't been a bad window, Snod, has it? It's not been bad at all. We've made some signings this season, haven't we? Really have, from pre-season to, mm. to this uh, January window. So, uh, yeah, we've got a lot of players, um, a big squad to pick from, and it's just selecting the right, the right players against the opposition. And uh, it's the players in form as well, because you look at Jagielka and Keane's performance against Leicester and you think uh, Sharpie said that Vardy didn't have a key. Mm. That was due to them two playing mm. really, really well. So uh, competition for places is great. Let's not forget uh, Mason Allgate and Ashley Williams mm -hmm. as well and Funes Mori coming back. So as Sharpie said, we've got six to choose probably two from. It's ridiculous, Sharpie, isn't it, that the transfer deadline day coincides with three quarters of the teams in the Premier League having a fixture. It's, it's a really difficult one, but I agree with you, the timing is wrong. It should have been extended another day. Uh, but listen, the transfer window is, is a law unto itself, and I just don't know <laughs> how and why it works. Do you not watch it, Sharpie? No. no <laughs> I think it was the yellow ties that put me off. I won't start you on the transfer window. No, I certainly uh, won't start you on VAR. No, don't, don't go down that line. Just very quickly, Theo Walcott, what a performance that was. Yeah, delighted. Uh, he gave yesterday a performance that I'm hoping to see for the rest mm. of the season and during his career at Everton. Uh, he played with energy, uh, he tracked back and worked mm. hard as well defensively. There were one Seamus Coleman second half, I mentioned it in commentary last mm. night, Daz, that uh, Seamus had gone beyond him, gone into the 18-yard box and all of a sudden Theo filled in for him at the right-back area. Mm. That's what uh, you want players to do. So two goals on top, man of the match performance for me. A great start and I'm sure there's plenty more to come from him as well. And that's just about it for part one of this week's programme. Coming up in part two, we'll hear from Sam Allardyce 
We'll also hear from Michael Keane and, of course, our man of the moment, very much our man of the moment, Seamus Coleman. Welcome back to part two of this week's programme. Well, if Wednesday night was a good night for the football club, it was a terrific night, wasn't it, for the manager Sam Allardyce. This is Big Sam's take on the recruitment of Eloquine Mangala and also the return of Seamus Coleman. Dad. I don't go this far, no, but it was almost superhuman. I've never seen anybody come back from, from 10 months out uh, and, and perform for 90 minutes. And, uh, and I think the, the character of the man um, is, is a great example for particularly the younger players at Everton. You know, when you can sprint uh, the last 80 yards in the 92nd minute with the ball and the opposition players who were who have been playing every week can't catch you up. Um, shows you the tremendous capacity for the for the game that he has. You did bring one in on loan, uh, like when Mangala. What what will he bring? What are his strengths? He's naturally left-footed, where we haven't got a natural left-footed player at all in the team in the squad, uh, apart from Leighton Baines when he gets fit again. So we got we got somebody who can naturally play left footed down the left hand side which will you know not only defensively be better but also create that little bit more you know I mean you can see the other night our strength lay down the right our left hand side was pretty good but you know we've got to try and get better in both areas and I think when you've got a natural left left, left footed player you've got better balance. Highlights are plenty from the Leicester City win snods and we particularly enjoyed Seamus Coleman. I can't say enough about him. Uh, I was, I was quite worried. Sixty minutes in an under twenty-three game is it enough? And when you see him making a run in the ninety-fourth minute, <laughs> you think he's a machine. The boy, he really is. He's, uh, he's fantastic. The crowd love him. Uh, again, the sixty thousand song came out about him, and he, he loved it. And his reaction at the end of the game, he got through it fantastically well. He played outstandingly well, and uh, delighted for him. Absolutely delighted for him. Everybody at the football club is absolutely thrilled to see him back. Let's hear from him. Um, delighted to get back out there and uh, put on that jersey again. And just uh, you know, most importantly, tonight was the win, and we got that, and it just makes it all that much better. I don't know if you heard, but the 60 grand chart was getting a, a fair old airing tonight. I did, and you know, I had to switch off a little bit from the little bit of. You know, excitement before the game from the fans, from from everyone, from the reception I got. Uh, very grateful for it, but I had a job to do. I needed to make sure I played well, so I kind of switched off a little bit from it. And uh, afterwards, I can really appreciate it. And you know, the support I've had from day one from all Everton fans and uh, I I Irish fans as well. But today was was definitely something I'll always remember. Now that I can look back, we've won the game, and you know, to see the the banner in in, in the stand and stuff like that. So. Very special night and happy that we won, which is most important. Sharpie, I particularly liked the 93rd, 94th minute when we had a counter-attack. And who was it on the right-hand side, yeah. sprinting forward? Seamus, listen, Snodds had said he, he was ex excellent. I think going into the game, I, thought, I think a few of us thought he'd be on the bench. Mm. might give him you know, 20 minutes, but he started them. And then we're thinking, how long is he going to last? But... All testament to, to Seamus, you know, his, his fitness levels were, were exceptional on the night. The good thing about him was he was getting forward. Uh, usually when somebody comes back from a broken leg, you're looking to think, you know, has he still got mm. that limp? Is he, is he a little bit scared? You couldn't see that with Seamus. Mm. I think he's came back. I think the way, and the promising thing, and this is no disrespect whatsoever to, to young John Joe, but right away you can see a partnership developing between Theo Walcott and Seamus. You know, Stodd's talked before about uh, Theo Walcott filling in for him uh, in stages, but I just thought right away there was an understanding there. Mm. Uh, I mean, always say he's only played one uh, reserve game, but I'm sure he's had a lot of behind closed doors games here as well to get him up to that. But as you said, to see him in the last minute, in the last couple of minutes, getting forward, he had a shot with his left foot. I'm not too sure. <laughs> you know, be before his injury, he wasn't great on his left foot, but listen. You could see he was loving every single minute, mm -hmm. the enthusiasm to be back there. And listen, you've got to give him a lot of credit because that is a big step. His first Premier League game, you know, and to be is so forceful in it as well and being so effective, sometimes he's just going to say, I'll just play my way through this. But he wasn't right from the first whistle. 
he was there. So a lot of credit for Seamus. Delighted to see him back. The ovation he got was outstanding and thoroughly deserved. Must have been an emotional night for the boys, Nuts. Very much so. Um, it's been a long time. Uh, I've been in, uh, injured quite a bit in, in my career at Everton and it's a frustrating time, it's a lonely time. Uh, but Seamus is one of them lads that don't get him down, he's worked exceptionally hard. I think he looked after himself a little bit better in them 10 months than I perhaps did when I got my injury. <laughs> yeah, ten, so, 10 months, not 10 years, yeah. not 10 years. Better than you do now. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he, and, and it gives the opposition uh, a problem. Mm. When he keeps going forward, mm. they've got to go back with him. Damari Gray, yeah. who played there, he's usually picks the ball up and, and goes at the opposition. He were having to do a lot yeah. of defending because mm. Seamus were taking him that way. So it gives us a great great outlet down yeah. this right hand side when you've got Seamus going forward and you've got Theo Walcott there as well. It gives the opposition a problem. Mm. Will he play against Arsenal? It's a big ask, isn't it's, it? It's a big ask, Dan, but you asked Seamus a question. He'd be like, I, yeah. I want to play. We, we yeah. spoke about that yeah. and Sharp yeah. said, he will. She yeah. Seamus mm. will go in and say, I want to play. I want to play. Mm. And listen, we've got a replacement there and John who can come in and do a job, but I'm sure Seamus will be in manager, don't knock the door, mm. don't rule me out for Saturday, mm. I want to play, you know, and I wouldn't be surprised if he plays again. Well, let's turn our attentions now to the Arsenal game at the Emirates on Saturday evening. This is Michael Keane's take on the visit to the capital. Uh, we'll go there to win the game, there's no reason why we can't, um, I think Swansea showed they can, they can be beat, so um, we'll go there confident after tonight and hopefully we can pick up some points. It's obviously been well documented, they've been busy this month, bringing in some uh, attacking reinforcements, that kind of kind of challenge that you relish? Yeah, it's motivation to do well, you want to you wanna play against the best players, um, they've gone and got a, a, a top class striker and uh, a few other good players as well, so it'll be a test, but uh, one we're looking forward to. I'm sure you'll be wanting to ruin a, a Bama Yang's debut. Exactly, yeah, that's the aim, uh, but we'll see. So now that win against Leicester City will undoubtedly give the boys plenty of confidence. It's Arsenal up next and you're never really sure which Arsenal you're going to get in. You know, we haven't got a great record down mm -hmm. down there at Arsenal does. Uh, on the day, be, they're capable of beating anybody. Mm. But we've seen uh, the last couple of results as well that against Swansea. I thought Swansea deserved to beat them uh, the other night. I thought they played really mm -hmm. well. So that's the flaky side of Arsenal. Um, we know it's going to be a difficult game, there's no question about it. Whatever team uh, our manager picks, uh, the 11 that he sends out there is going to have to work exceptionally hard and we're going to have to try and keep the ball because that's what Arsenal are good at, keeping the ball, keeping possession, make the opposition work. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a difficult game. If we, if we get a point, I'll be highly delighted down there. I'm greedy, I want mm. three, but our record doesn't say that. But, hey, let's try and go and... and Let's try and not get beaten down there, which will be a terrific result. You and I will be in the commentary box at the Emirates mm -hmm. on Saturday, Sharpie, half five kickoff. And would you take a point without being too negative? Yeah, I think you would. And four points out of a possible six mm. it would be would be ideal. You know, it wouldn't be ideal, but six out of six. But listen, I keep seeing this going down there. Listen, the run needs to end. You know, is it an Arsenal of eight, nine years ago? No, it's not. Mm. It's, it's an Arsenal that. It's not said there that they're quite flaky defensively. Okay, Czech makes a mistake against Swansea the other night there, but they don't look a unit defensively. So that's a, that's a, a plus point for us. We need to try and get after them a little bit. I think in times gone by, and I can understand what's not said, we sit back and allow them to play and try and frustrate them. I think this is a different Arsenal. I think, you know, with the pace of Walcott and whoever plays, if Balassi plays, I think with the pace we've got, they can cause them problems. You know, Arsenal want to flood forward all mm. the time. But if they have to think about defending, I think we've got a chance down there. Mm. Obviously, it depends on what the manager picks and who he picks. But this is not an Arsenal that I would be as fearful of going down there as I have been, you know, in the last eight, nine years kind of thing. So, well, so it'll be difficult. I and mean, I fully understand that. I still think that for the supporters going down there as well, they want to see their team have a go. Mm. They want to see their team have a go and think, OK, you go through the players and we've got a good squad of players. It's not mm. as if we haven't got a good squad of, we've got a good squad of players who I think can stand up to Arsenal uh, and hopefully get a result. Well, three points at Arsenal really would cap what's been a terrific mm. week. And this terrific week was started not by the under-23s who had a, a great win during the week mm. at, yeah, uh, at it was Southport. A tough game as well. Chelsea riding high as well uh, in the under-23 league. Conditions weren't great. The pitch weren't conducive to good football. But I thoroughly enjoyed the game and I thought we deserved to, to win the game as well. Two good goals. Two terrific goals and uh, yeah, big Fraser. Um, 
I didn't know before that he, he came as a 14 year old from Northampton as a midfield player mm. uh, because I just seen him as an out and out striker and I, I watched him in the European game Daz when he made his debut he played really well and I thought he led the line very very well the other night he's a big strong boy took his goal well and I, overall enjoyed the game but more importantly it was a great victory for under 23s. You can see from the goals Sharpie that Rosala Sambu and Fraser Hornby are getting a bit of an understanding together which is which is vitally important. Well it is Dan and it's, it's, it's odd now, it's an odd thing to see two centre forwards or two strikers working in tandem. You know I think uh, the modern day football is all about being one uh, but I think playing together as a, as a pair will help both of them. They, they share the workload, uh, they're not isolated up front so it's all about building an understanding, you know, and, and they've done well, and that's a good result against the Chelsea side. Uh, so David's got them back on track, and, and hopefully more victories to come. Well, we're just about out of time on this week's programme. It has been a very good week for the football club. Let's hope we can end it on another high with a good result at the Emirates Stadium against Arsenal. Thanks to Snods, thanks to Sharpie. Do join us again in seven days' time for another Everton show. You've been watching The Everton Show on YouTube. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm sure you have. Don't forget to subscribe, and that way you can catch every single future episode.